okay, we've done the preparation ideas to work our way up to understanding why we see moon phases and when they rise and when they set about. So we're really, really getting tuned into the one thing in astronomy we observe changing day after day, repeating through the, the months and the cycles that we can, we can watch, but it's, it's confusing what's really going on. And so we're going to tie in our chapter uh, one ideas of observing moon phases. We observed, we drew, we, we named them, we went here, and then a few days later, we drew Terminator 1, Terminator 2, Terminator 3, then came over here. Terminator 0, 1, 2, 3. Here, all dark, a new moon. Then it was waxing for two weeks on the west, becoming more and more lit on the west until it was all lit. And now the west was dark, becoming more and more dark or waning. But why? What's going on? When do, when do these phases rise and set? They rise and set at different times, and it changes little by little each day. Okay? So we're going to observe that. And you can figure that out again with a sketch. So on, from the one point of view, this is what we see. This is what we observe. And from the other point of view, this lets us get off the planet and look at what's really going on to make that happen. Okay? So we're going to do that. And we're going to do that in five parts. I've broken it up into five parts and try to make this kind of easy Earth to remember. Each step is not too bad, but if you're confused, talk with your professor and talk amongst yourselves and figure it out. So each step, each part, excuse me, has three steps. Part one, one, two, three. Part two, three more steps. Part three, part four, part five. So 15 total steps. Do it, again, repeatedly, thinking about what you're doing. What does it mean? Go out and look at the moon and then you'll uh, have a better sense of all that. All right, so the first step is drawing sun and earth. We'll take some, uh, some steps, at least the first part. The second part, we'll put on earth, we'll put an observer spinning around. What do they see as they're looking up? Third part, we got our put in our moon. Where is it? Put those in. Then from these, once we've set up our picture, which is the same. No matter what the moon phase, we're all going to do one, two, three, the same. Then we're going to put in moon at different places, one at a time. And from that, we're going to put in moon, and we'll notice, when would I see it rise about? And about when would I see it set? So that's going to be challenging to see how the picture tells you that. But you can do it. Once you get the aha, it's pretty neat. Also, we'll look up and say, hey, what phase am I seeing? Okay. To do this, we're going to draw a top view. So what we're looking at again is our model of sun, earth, and moon. And we're going to, rather than draw the side view where we can see the tilt, we're going to draw a top view. Now North Pole is going to be in the center of our circle. And we're going to have moon going around as earth spins each day, the moon just creeps very slowly in the same direction Earth spins eastward, but very slowly. So each day, the moon is in a slightly different position. Okay, so that's going to be our picture right there, and let's let's work on that. And I'll I'll follow the steps in your astronomy coach, and we'll just do it. Use pause, pause. Try to do it yourself, and the more you can do it yourself, the more you own this stuff. You can do it. Okay, I think. We're good. The important thing to remember is that in any light, with any light, the side facing the light is lit. The other side is dark, and it'll cast a shadow. So whatever side of my head is facing the light, if I'm spinning, then different sides will face the light, much like Earth. Half of Earth is always lit. Half is always dark. And Earth is always casting a shadow in space. Same with Moon, Mars, Venus, everything. Same with you out in the sunlight. Right? Half of you is lit and half of you is dark. Whether or not it spins, well, we'll talk about that. Some interesting questions will come out of this and some interesting insights and awareness will come out of it. Okay, so let's draw this picture. Step one, part one, excuse me. We're going to do 
sun and earth. Draw sun rays and earth. So part one says sun. How do I draw a sun? I'm going to use an entire sheet of paper. Again, really recommend that you make your sheet nice and big. Turn it sideways. Really be able to see. There's going to be some details in here. If it's small, you'll lose it. Okay, nice and big. And do it, do it, throw it away. Do it again, throw it away. Do it until you've got it and you can think it and then you can follow these steps. So sun. I'm going to just do it in this particular way. I'm going to have the sunlight coming over here where my light bulb is. Sun is very far away compared to moon. 400 times farther away than moon. So I'm going to just put sun rays here, arrows, out here for sunlight. Sun, LT, sunlight, coming from way out there. Sun somewhere out there. All right, that's step one. Draw parallel rays coming from the right. Step two, put in Earth. See, these aren't bad. But I'm not going to put Earth this way. Remember, I'm going to put Earth this way so that I can see Moon orbiting. And that's going to reveal the information that we need. So Earth top view, looking down above the North Pole. So from our spacecraft, we're looking. Okay. And so we draw this. Let's draw Earth, our big blue marble in space. And this could be... That's good. Remember, that's our NP, North Pole. Of course, that's Earth. Keep that in mind. Draw a circle for Earth and label NP. We did it. Uh, OK. Put it in the center of the page. Draw the diameter. I say, you know, two thumbnails on your paper. That's fine. Now, step three. Earth's terminator. The light's coming from over there. Here's a ball in space. Where's the Terminator going to be? Pause and do it. OK, you're back. And that's not too bad. So Sun and Earth, that's what this one's all about. Now you might say, well, what about Earth's tilt? I'm not worrying about it. It's too much information. It is tricky and a lot going on. That's too much. We're not going to get that captured on this picture. OK, so there's our Terminator. And you know, of course, there's a sharp, dark, the dark side. Shadow will be over there. We'll get to that later, but not on this picture. OK, that's part one. And there goes my spaceship. Uh, part two. So now we're going to show Earth's spin. And we're going to stand on Earth. We're going to be incredibly large. And we're going to stand in one place as Earth spins. We're not going to worry about latitude. It just doesn't matter that much for this picture. It's too much information. So it does get tricky. We'll just get the essential idea. As we stand here on Earth, it'll spin. So this is our picture. Remember that our picture, think of it in 3D. Thinking of us somewhere up here. Might as well throw it on the equator. And we spin around. We're staying in one place. Here we are. Yeah, we're kind of in Mexico there. Spinning around. Right? So here's what we're spinning. we're spinning around. All right, we need to put one of those in there. So, let's, uh, let's draw Earth's spin and put in our observer. Now, be detailed about this, because it's a little tricky. Remember, you can think of it this as you. You can also think of this as your ground. So here you are. Remember, Earth spins which way? Eastward. So I can also draw it this way. Draw it flat like this. So there's east. And here you are. OK, there's your head, and you're way taller than the atmosphere. Fine. Okay. This is your ground. This is your sky. As Earth spins, your sky is over there. Here's your ground. You can't see below that, right? The ground extends as far as you can see. There you are. Where's sun? Where is that sun? Coming around here. You're spinning. And one day, you spin around once, right? OK, so let's put that in. All right, what are the steps that I have here? Earth spin. Step four. Use a circular arrow around the North Pole to show which way Earth spins. All right, fine. 
Now, what I like to do is this. I like to point out that it'll do a quarter of a spin. How long? How many hours? About six hours, right? And then a quarter of a spin, another six hours. And then, oh, a quarter of a spin in about six hours. And then a quarter of a spin in six hours. Spinning eastward. So that's something to, to remember. Step five, Earth's observer. You're in a spaceship right here. We're not saying what do we see from Earth. We're saying what do we see from a spaceship looking down above the North Pole. Okay. So we're watching an observer here. And we want to draw them with an east and west horizon. And that's the ground. You can't see but beneath that ground. So we're going to draw that. Put an arrow on east to indicate that that's the way you're headed. It will really help. And we're going to use the west side to see if it's waxing or waning later. So trust me. Okay. So draw an observer. Put it at eight evenly spaced positions. On the horizon line, on every position, put an E and a W. Now you could cheat that a little bit. Let's see. I'm going to try that out. Let's go here, our ground. I'm going to use brown here. All right, this is our ground. Make it nice. OK, there's my arrow. Remember, that's the ground. And here you are, nice and tall. Earth is spinning, so this is which direction? Put it in there. That's east. And then the other way is, of course, west. You don't need to flip the letters around. 